thing. Number one, yes, more women are smoking pot during pregnancy, but there's no real harm to the baby's health. Is that fact or fiction? Mm, I'm going to say fiction. I'm going to go uh, with facts. I'm looking at all you people that are saying facts. So this is the thing. So it is a fact. More people are smoking pot. Hold on, hold on. But it is fiction that it is not harmful to oh. the baby's health. There we yes, go. Yes. So Thank this you. is the thing. So there are a lot of good uh, medical indications for marijuana when you're not pregnant. <laughs> so most people will use marijuana when they're pregnant for morning sickness. It does help some people. Really? But, yeah, but it can cause what they call cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, where it makes it worse. And they've actually discovered that when women smoke pot, marijuana, whatever you want to call it, yeah. that the kids later on can have uh, increased risk of ADHD, mm. anxiety, depression, short stature as well. So short stature, short stature. Yep, you can have kids that's like that high, little like, short <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> yeah. And they're probably hungry all the time. Exactly, exactly. So they're short and fat. So. Okay, short and fat. All right. No, <laughs> number two. Here we go. It's more dangerous to get piercings down below. <laughs> then they get piercings on other parts of the body. That's got to be fact. I'm going fact with you, Val. No, what do you think, audience? That's actually fiction. It's oh. fiction. Yeah, yeah. So this is the deal. Down below, forgive my voice, but down below you have a lot of blood supply. And anywhere you have more blood supply, you have quicker healing and a less of a risk of infection. And so they actually heal faster and they don't get infected as often. Now, there's one caveat to that. There's okay. a piercing called the Prince Albert or the Princess Albertina. Google it if you don't know what it is. Oh, Come on, but no, I was just going to, okay, oh, I was no. told not to ask. <laughs> bad news, bad news. Because bad I was going to ask. Oh, no, bad news. But when you get that, there's an increased risk of um, urethral obstruction, and so you can have painful urination, um, urinary retention, bladder infections, kidney infections. Okay. So the Prince Albert we got the and point. Princess Albertina, yeah. no. Why would and anybody want to do that? That's what no, I, was, so I do want to ask no. that. So actually, it's supposed to heighten sensuality in certain parts yeah. of the body. So like people who have a difficult time having orgasms find that they tend to have more orgasms with these piercings. All right, fine, I'll do it. Go for it. Yeah, go go for it. You got some issues? No, uh -oh. We'll go. talk later. We'll talk okay, later. Okay, number three. Here we go. If you chew or crave lots of ice, it signifies major health issues. I'm going to say, I don't know if it's major, though. There's, this is a trick. <laughs> I'm going to say fiction. You know what? It causes some issues, but I don't know if they're major. I'm going to go with facts. So it actually, it is a fact. It is a yes. fact. Now, it's oh, not a oh, given. Yeah. It's not a given, but it's what they call pica. So pica is when people want to eat things that are inedible. And in yep. particular, this one is called uh, pagophagia. It's just this desire for ice. Usually when you have that, it's because there's um, iron deficiency anemia. Yep. Well, in and of itself, that's not a huge deal, but you can have iron deficiency and anemia with larger uh, conditions like colon cancer and things like that. So if you do have pagophagia, talk to your doctor, you can have anemia. And they also found the people that really like ice have um, an increased risk of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So they just keep eating it, keep eating it. So if you find that you're super anxious and you like to eat ice, talk to your doctor. Right. So yeah. the anemia, you have to take iron pills, right? You have to take iron pills. But if you just eat a healthy diet, so eat some red meat, you know, uh, leafy green vegetables. What if you don't eat meat? Well, leafy green vegetables, legumes, beans, things like okay. that help. But get a burger. Okay, mm. all right. <laughs> Bring it up. Yeah, yeah. All right, number four. Actress Hilary Duff had a delightful placenta smoothie after recently giving birth. Oh, oh, oh. This is something all new mothers should do. Fiction! <laughs> yeah. No way. No way. You guys That's gotta are so be fiction. judgmental. <laughs> no, actually, so this is the thing. So she actually. Wait, who makes the placenta smoothie? <laughs> well, I, I can make sure if you want. I, I, I can hey, hey, I mean, what you is it? You go to extra protein bar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, do they just bring a blender into the delivery room once that thing oh, comes out? Yeah. What's in there? Fresh, Absolutely. fresh, yeah. right in there. Fresh, right. Oh, nah. So, this is the thing. so what, what people believe is that so, and actually, she said she has some ice cubes left over, by the way. So I bet if you can hit her up on uh, Instagram, she'll, she'll send you some. <laughs> but, uh, so this is the thing. So they say that the placenta has iron in it and it's got hormones so after delivery your hormones drop so you may have a little bit of anxiety depression yeah. postpartum depression yeah. i mean people suffer from anemia so they think that eating the placenta will help with the hormone levels help with the anemia but it is a fiction thank there's you there's no mm. science behind it Take some iron if you're uh, if you're a little bit anemic. Um, and as far as the hormone levels are concerned, it gives you a little boost for like a day or two. So don't do it. And there are risks. You can get infections, both mom and baby. So stay away from it. Yeah, who's, who's making this smoothie? A lot mm. of folks are. Yeah. Yeah, mm. no, thank yeah. you. Okay, here we go. Number five. <clears throat> this one's kind of gross. <laughs> Eat up. Consuming your boogers <laughs> is actually good for you. <laughs> this better be fiction. <laughs> it's got to be fiction. You know what? It's actually fact. Oh, that's so gross. This is gross. <laughs> that's just gross. No, 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 this is that's the deal. gross. You are too judgmental, Val. This is the deal. So, no, 
number one, boogers are nothing but dried mucus, right? Yeah. Well, mucus is 95% water, so it's a good source of water. It's important to hydrate. But you just said it's dried up. Well, no, but there's still water in there. Number two, the other 5% is what we call lysozyme, mucin, and immunoglobulins, and they help to fight infections. And so actually, as crazy as it sounds, eating boogers, maybe I should have done it last I was week, say. I'm a mess now, <laughs> actually will keep you hydrated and help to fight infection. Doc, okay, isn't fine. there better modern medicine these days? <laughs> no, sir, sir. Get Sometimes. water and electrolytes. The old, the old ways are better, Ryan. Oh. Just like we used to do when we were kids. We, so, to, to I was about to say, yeah. so all these kids have yeah. got it right. They got yeah. it right. I'm going to go behind this TV right now and start doing it now. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay, here we go. Number six. Drinking tea or coffee during pregnancy will affect the baby's size. That's a trick you know, question. Um, it sounds like it could yeah, be a fact. Yeah, I'm going to say it fact, too. It's fact. It is. And so basically, it comes down to caffeine. Now, you can drink caffeine while you're pregnant, and the American College of ob and the World Health Organization say, go for it, no problem. But caffeine does cause blood vessels to constrict, and so you get less blood supply to the placenta. Less blood supply means less oxygen, less nutrients, and they tend not to grow as well. And so they found for basically every 100 milligrams of caffeine you drink per day, the baby's going to be half a pound lighter. So if you do like 200 milligrams per day, a pound lighter. So at birth, Basically. At birth, yeah, but it but doesn't they'll affect grow them. Later. They'll, they'll, they'll catch up and it doesn't affect them emotionally, mentally. It doesn't affect their development in so any way. So how many cups of coffee should a pregnant woman no have? No more than one. They say 12 ounces of caffeine a day, right? A day, no more than one, one cup of day. coffee a day? One a day. So one cup of coffee or What about soda. wine? None, 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 no wine. No wine? No, no, no. Wine. They say that you can have wine now. Well, well this but, is the thing. No, they, they actually recommend that you don't because they, they don't know what that threshold is for fetal alcohol yeah. syndrome. It could be eight oh. ounces, it could be seven ounces. And Nobody knows. metabolize it differently. So you may be able to metabolize it well and the baby's not affected and other people might not. Pot. Pot. None. You are <laughs> zilch. We've I'm already, we've already done pot. this, <laughs> now. No All right. pot. You're no pot, one no cup wine. of coffee, and no wine. No wine. All there right. You got that all, you pregnant mamas out smoothie. there? Yeah, and drink your placenta smoothie. No, thank you. All right. Good to see you. And eat your boogers. Good to see you both. <laughs>